At the age of 22, I decided to go to Amsterdam. I just wanted to go for one year and then go back again to Germany where I was born and bred. I learned the Dutch language very well. I enjoyed the city very much and I listened with eagerness to all the lectures I followed at the university. And it felt almost like paradise, but there was one problem. My ethnicity. I was a moth, a kraut, a German. The Germans have not only brought the Christmas tree, the beer and bratwurst to the Netherlands, but also the Second World War. And the dance in my car with a German number plate were the silent witnesses of that anti-German feelings that was also there in that time. I found it difficult to deal with it. In the beginning, I tried to hide my roots and when I was in public to speak very quietly in, in German if I had to. And I remember very well the first time when I was at a party and people were again talking about the crowds and I raised my hand and I said, there is also a crowd among you. And the people were honestly shocked. They said, but we don't mean that you are a crowd. Absolutely not. You can hardly hear that you are a German. You speak Dutch so well much better than Prince Bernard. Indeed, this was a questionable compliment because the Dutch people know that Prince Bernard spoke with a very heavy Dutch accent when he, uh, a German accent when he spoke Dutch. Um, but why do I tell you this? Because I have learned in that years what it means to be the other. What it means to be and how it feels not to belong to us, but to them. When you have a different color, when you have a different name, when you have different habits, so that was it. And how to fill this gap between us and them? how to build bridges without losing sight of our differences. Because I also learned during these years that my otherness also has benefits. I was not sitting between two chairs because I, had, I, I could look with, with German eyes to the Netherlands and with Dutch eyes to Germany. So the added value, in fact, of a bicultural person. So I'm at least not sitting between two chairs, but I'm sitting on two chairs. And to have perhaps a much more comfortable image, I'm sitting on a sofa. So and suddenly, when I realized that I understood we must learn to look at diversity in a positive way and make our differences fruitful. And therefore, we need to change our mindset from either or to as well as. I wrote articles about that. I edited books, I gave lectures in the Netherlands and abroad, but all of this had not the impact that I had hoped for. But then, eight years ago, I was invited for a talk in Vienna. And I stayed one more day because I wanted to see the Hundertwasserhaus which was built by the famous Austrian architect and artist Friedensreich Hundertwasser. I liked his colorful, 
organic building designs and his view on architecture that was very person and environment friendly. For him, a house was a kind of a third skin. It's your first skin, then you have your clothes, and then he said, there is a house that is a third skin. And a house has to breathe, he said. And so he had grown plants, of plants were growing out of the walls and trees were coming out of the verandas. Isn't that a beautiful view? So I went there and inside that house I saw this text. When we dream alone, it is only a dream. But when many dream together, it is the beginning of a new reality. Suddenly, I realized the shortcoming of giving lectures and writing articles because it wasn't mutual enough. It was too much a one-way communication. We needed a movement. We needed something that could give a voice to the people and their daily life experiences. And that, at the same time, share good information, quality, quality information. And in order to reduce prejudices towards each other, towards each other's cultures, and towards each other's religions. In a way, I wanted to build Hundertwasser houses together with people from different and very colorful backgrounds and where they can design their own room, but there is also a common space for meeting each other, talking to each other and celebrating together. So a place where you can feel at home and where the different talents of people can create dynamic connections. Small new we's where the good life for all is the common aim. And after this inspiring visit to Vienna, the Dutch project New We was born. We built a multimedia dialogue website where people can find information and inspiration about values and beliefs in daily life and about how to live together in a society which has entered the age of globalization and migration. So let's have a look at that project. What would a society look like in which everybody can feel at home, whatever their origin and philosophy of life may be? What connects people? and makes differences mutually beneficial. Looking for a new we. The project we wants to bring people together from different cultural and religious backgrounds to make a common search for a new we. The themes which we deal with on this website are closely connected with the questions, problems and challenges Europe is facing today. Migration and integration, individual identity and social cohesion, and the need for transcultural forms of communication. You will not find a ready made recipe of a new we on this website, but you will find a lot of inspiring ideas, talks, information, and opinions about what a new we may require. The central theme of this website is the daily life of people who are living in a quickly changing society and are confronted by having to make new choices in the midst of this dynamic world. The new WE project makes use of many different forms of communication. Videos like Generation Y, Talking heads, 
Expliciet kun je zijn als rechter in het dagelijks leven. Onze woorden brengen. And the theme of the month. Articles, papers and columns. And podcast. We ask people in the streets and in neighborhoods, youngsters, people with a university degree and illiterate people, well-known and less familiar men and women, what do they think about a new we? And those who are skeptical of a new we get a voice as well. What do you think of it? Do you have questions or do you want to know more about something you saw or read on the site? Would you like to cooperate or maybe set up your own project? Make use of the extended information section on the site. We make the connections needed to put your ideas into action. The project comprises, in addition to the Young website team, an interdisciplinary and interuniversity research group that explores existing and desirable forms of WE. The Inspiration Kit on the homepage of newwe.nl forms the link between the research and the website WE. The project WE wants to offer information and orientation in the field of culture, religion, and society and tries to promote mutual discussion. How can people live together in a peaceful manner in Europe without losing sight of the internal differences? How can we make those differences fruitful? And what does a new we look like that aims at providing a good life for all? The present social diversity is our starting point. The motto of the project therefore is we connect the differences. Now, this website has 50,000 unique visitors a month. That is good, that is nice. But now we want also to make offline activities, so online and offline together. So to create new we broedplaatsen, um, kind of breeding places in the country. So, and I'm sure that we can do that together. Perhaps it's time to spread the dream and look for a European new we, look for new uh, European new we projects. With all the refugees coming to Europe now, I think the necessity is there. And by the way, I didn't went back to Germany. I stayed in Amsterdam and became the director of the Dominican Study Center and a professor for theology and society at the Freie Universiteit in Amsterdam. And one of the reasons why is because I'm still sitting on that sofa, convinced that we have to embrace diversity in order to find the good life for all.